What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, Awakened Toast here, and today, welcome back to another Blade and Sorcery video. And what we're gonna be doing today is we are gonna be covering the official release for the brand new update. If you guys have been paying attention to a lot of the recent uploads on the channel, especially Blade and Sorcery oriented, you may have noticed that this recent update has been in beta for quite a while now. And today, I'm happy to let you guys know that this version is now officially released for the PC VR version. There's no need to go over to your beta tab and switch your versions. The update is all good to go. And in order to celebrate this, I figured I'd go and rock out one random weapon to cover for a video. If you guys do end up enjoying this video and like to see more content made on some more Blade and Sorcery, then be sure to smash that motherfucking thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new so you guys can stay up to date with all the VR content we post. And also, before we hop into this video, I do want to make a huge shout out to Antlion Audio for sponsoring this video. Today's video is sponsored by the Antlion Mod Mic, and this is something that I'm really happy to actually be doing a sponsor video on because the sole fact, this is a microphone I've been using ever since I started making VR content, and it's something that I definitely recommend to anyone that just wants to up their video quality. Not only is it important to focus on your video content, but also the audio that's within it. And the best part about this product is that it's just simple and straightforward to use. All I have to do is throw this thing on a magnet. And then I'm good to record any of my VR content. And just to show how sturdy this microphone is, it's not coming off. I mean, you can hear it shake pretty hard, and I mean, in any way, shape, or form, you're never gonna be moving your head like that intense when you're playing VR. Most of the time, if you have your VR headset on, you're gonna be moving it like this and your microphone is gonna be staying in place perfectly fine that entire time. Also not to mention about this microphone is it literally has 12 hours plus of battery life. So anytime that I'm doing like my super, super long play sessions, I'm usually using this microphone and charging a spare. So like you guys can see here, I actually have two of the same microphone. I am in love with this product. I just, I love how easy it is to use. I strongly suggest when it comes down to any of these microphone products, that the Antlion is on your list, especially if you're an aspiring VR content creator, and this is something that you really wanna focus on, on upping your quality, Antlion has got you covered. Once you receive your Antlion mod mic, it will come in a pretty good little traveling case. This is sitting right inside of the box, you can literally just slip it right out, and this is really, really nice for any time I go traveling or whatever else, and I need to bring this microphone with me. So what exactly comes in the case? Well, once we go and open this bad boy, you can notice that we got a charging cable, we got the Antlion mod mic right there, and we also get the USB dongle. As for the packaging, I love how simple and straightforward it is, but it also still feels like you're getting a quality product. Because I know a lot of the time, a lot of brands like to go like all out with presentation, but I feel like whatever they've done here is the perfect way to go and present the microphone. You got your main gear, you got your charging cable, and you got your instruction manual just tagged on the bottom. Thank you again to Antlion for sponsoring this video, and without further ado, let's get back to it. And now that we're back, I can let you guys in on a little something that I've been thinking about starting on the channel. Depending on how well this video does, this will be the thing that determines whether or not we continue this as a series. So like you heard in the intro, we're going to be doing one dedicated weapon for this video. And I'm thinking about doing like a ranking series of how weapons are in Blade and Sorcery. And then maybe by the end of it, we can figure out what's our favorite weapon within this game. So as for today, I'm debating whether or not I want to start with anything like a blunt weapon or anything along the lines of an axe. Because I want something that's going to be one-handed, but also in the same way, I'm not against using a weapon that's also two-handed too. Because I mean, if we use a big freaking maul, which honestly, I have not really used this at all in Blade and Sorcery, this might be something really fun to just like try for a change. I mean, for the most part, we could probably do some pretty good blocks in order just to go against the enemies and like hold their sword against them and then just boom, smack them with the freaking hammer, man. Like this could be a really, really cool weapon to start off this series. So you know what? I was gonna do an ax, but I think, I think we are gonna go with the maul. Our review is gonna be based on using this beautiful thing. It looks like we might be able to get some hard hits with the back of it, but our main thing, obviously, of course, is gonna be using the hammer part and just 
destroying freaking enemies with this. Also, before we get into this, if you guys do want to recommend a weapon for the next video, be sure to let me know by dropping a comment down in the comment section below. And whichever one that I decide on doing, I'll be sure to go and feature your comments in the next Blade and Sorcery video. Okay, let's freaking do this thing, man. We're gonna be using a maul. Out of all weapons, I was not expecting to be using a maul for this video, but you know what? I mean, it's going to be something interesting. I haven't really done anything along the lines of this, so I'm actually, like, really excited to see how well it does. And hopefully by the end of this video, I can determine whether or not this is a weapon that I'll actually use in my Blade and Sorcery runs. This thing is just so beefy. Like, <laughs> oh my god, man. That is ridiculous. Can I just get, like, a... Can I, like, pop him with it? Can I just... Oh, you can just freaking pop him like that. Let's go and move your shield, please. Oh my god, dude, that feels so insane. All right, we gotta do some golf. Did I just knock that out of her hand? Oh, you freaking can! Okay, yeah, the attacks on the mall were a lot better than I was expecting for the most part. Like, seriously? Overall, as a weapon right now, it feels really comfortable. I thought it was going to be, like, super awkward to use, but for blocking-wise, it's great. Honestly, for weapon handling, it feels nice. Like, with one hand, you're going to feel that huge, huge delay with the physics. But once you get it, like, really positioned right, you can do some work with this weapon. Okay, yeah, this thing is legit. I'm liking it. I am liking this thing a lot. I was not expecting to really dig a weapon to this caliber, man. Oh, that was my couch. Ah. Whoo, yes, dude. Okay, so far, weapon handling, pretty good. Weapon for damage, I mean, it's all right. I tend to, like, knock my enemies down a lot compared to getting, like, an instant kill. But for the most part, I'm really enjoying the use of this weapon. This man is playing his distance. I don't know what's going on with this, but you know what? That was your own mistake. Oh, dude, I gotta get, like, a vertical strike and see if I can just knock them off their feet. <sighs> that was close. I mean, not exactly what I was looking for, but it was pretty close. Not the best, but that'll get the job done for now. All right, Missy, try me. I need to get an uppercut, man. That's what I'm waiting for. Did she not die from that? Okay, so the weapon damage for the most part is not that great. I mean, like, it's all right. I would say for the most part, this weapon's good for its knockdowns. Like, overall, if you're going for, like, a kill using them all, like, yeah, it's all right, but they take a lot of hits. And I can't believe how some of these enemies survive these strikes with how heavy I assume this hammer really is. Oops, off the feet you go. It's mullet time. All right, bring it. Whew, yeah, like, even there, like, when you get a jab, it knocks them off their feet. So, I mean, that is a really, really cool mechanic. Because, like, I feel with most of my hits, especially with, like, swords or whatever else, I can't really get, like, that knockdown. But with this, oh, man, you you feel the weight once you actually get a hit with it. Like, it feels awesome. I don't know if you can actually get, like, any dismemberments using it, though. I mean, that would be kind of cool just to, like, smack a head off using this thing. But I don't know how uh, how plausible that would really be. So with that, we're probably going to have to see if I'm making something like that work. <laughs> All right. Give me a decapitation. Give me a decap. Give me a decap. A decap. Oh, he's a dual wielder. Look at him. He's got style on his feet, man. He's got some style. Ooh, I can't believe I actually blocked that with that. Sweet. All right, let's see how the one side works here, too. Okay, this one doesn't really work that well. I was hoping it would kind of, like, push him back. But it looks like it just kind of, I don't know, slides off the body instead of having more contacts. So that attack's a little bit rough. I want to see if I can get kind of like a little clothesline using this, too. All right, so let's see if we can actually get a knockdown using this. I don't think we can. But maybe if we pulled the hammer, like if we pulled it like this, it might be possible. Nope. Okay, so that is not possible. I was hoping you could just kind of, like, knock him over that way. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Oh my god, though. Do you see how brutally massacred this character is, though? Oh my god. To the gory spikes you go. I'm sorry to tell you, but that's just where your home is. You're dead. 
You're dead to me. I gotta test how good it is with the telekinesis. Is this gonna be actually a, a way of combat using it this way? I mean, it looks like it has some power behind it. I mean, it's slow, but the weight kind of carries it for itself. It's so weird using this with telekinesis because you can feel the weight of it because it like travels slower. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, you have to be in the headset and like using the weapon to really understand the difference of that. But so far, the mall, I'm liking it. For being a blunt weapon, I'm really happy for how well it's actually working. Let's go and get the leg. Oh, she's gonna try to get back up, isn't she? That was your mistake. That was a big mistake. I'm sorry. Oh my god, that felt so cool. Like actually being able to walk over the body and then just like, boom! Knockout! Ah! Uh-oh, someone's about to die. Okay, that is probably gonna be my favorite way to use this weapon. Like, literally going over the body of the enemy and then just smacking them. Like, that is so freaking cool. Dude, this even works with one hand? I did not think that was gonna be possible. Oh no, you have no weapon. What do you think you're doing there? Yeah. Okay, there is something I do not want to leave out of the mix for this review, and that is the imbuements. I guess I really haven't seen what these things do, so I'm actually curious to see if there's any alt uses that you can use with these, or if it's just the uh, kind of like swords. So we're just going to try to use the fire imbuement, and it burnt that man's face to a crisp. Okay. Yeah, I think imbuements work pretty well, for the most part. I think they work dang well, man. We already got the weapon out of our hand with that, but I only got... What, a few hits off of just using that once? Like, I think I, yeah, for the full imbuement of the fire, I only got like three to four hits. Which I don't know if that's for like every weapon, but dude, that is, that is pretty brutal. Okay, let's go and try to throw this on with some more fire again. It does look really, really good though. I love the quality of the new like magic imbuements in this. Like, it looks so solid. Blade and Sorcery, I love you guys. I seriously love your team and what you guys are doing with the new spells. Like, ah. Oh. The, the new work or not workaround, but more or less just the update that really enhanced the spells. It looks beautiful. I love it. Mista, I need to go and get some more fire so you can just chillax for a moment, okay? Just chill, chill out. Whew. Give me that thing back. Get a re-grip on this weapon. So then I can just... Ooh. What you gonna do, son? What you gonna do? Uh-oh. Oh, that block was super satisfying, though. Oh, my God. I don't know if satisfying is the right word when I'm literally playing, like, a combat simulator, but that's what I'm going to use. <laughs> One thing I have noticed about this update, though, I don't know if any of you guys have been experiencing this, but if I ever grab an enemy and then get the kill, for some reason, my hand glitches out. So, like, right now, I would not be able to use my left hand. If anyone else has been running into this bug, let me know. I don't know if this is just because I have mods downloaded or if this is a reoccurring issue of the game. But I wanted to feature that in this video because it's definitely been something that's been happening to me a lot more consistently. But I've just realized I think you can fix it by just grabbing another weapon, which is kind of nice. I just want to try this again to see if I can replicate it. Okay. Yep, so it looks like we did replicate it. Is there any way I can grab another weapon? Yep, okay, so that is the fix. As long as you go and grab another weapon, you can fix that glitch. So anyone else who has been running into that, just be aware that that is a way to get past that inevitable glitch of your arm just freezing up if you grab another body. So that's nice to know. Oh, fancy dancy. Look at you go. All right, I gotta try to do some parries. I love the fact with the mall, you just have so much leverage to go and block with. Because this thing, for the most part, like, you have so much to work with. You know what I mean? Like, you can just block almost from any angle. Like, it's ridiculous. I've been able to just block almost every attack. Other than that one, she ended up getting through on that one. But, yeah, this is, this is great. So I could go for a block, maybe get a kick, and then just boom! Boom! Aw, oh, she rolled the wrong way. I was gonna get a third attack. Oh, yeah. Okay, so blocking feels really, really good in terms of getting the job done on this game. Like, 
This mall, overall, it's been impressing me. I kind of just disregard the malls because I was like, it's really not a weapon that I would want to use in a medieval fighting game because, you know, when you think of medieval, the biggest thing that comes to mind is swords. And you don't really think of the big heavy honkers for, uh, <laughs> for weapons to use. But overall, the weight feels pretty maintainable. Obviously, it packs a punch. It's a little unfortunate with like the damage side. It feels a little bit on the lower side in terms of just the amount of damage it does though. Like obviously when you get a hit, like yeah, it's gonna pack a punch in terms of like knocking them out. But overall for actually getting that finisher, it's just like, it takes a lot more hits than your average other weapons. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you guys are looking forward to using the mall in your gameplay. But I am definitely getting my daily workout off of recording this video, so. Holy crap, can we just can we just take a breather for like one moment? I need I need just a little bit of a break. Okay, you don't understand. You might just be an NPC in this game, but I'm actually using my physical exertion to try and play this. So give me a break. <sighs> Holy cow. Alright, let me breathe. Let me breathe! Alright, God! Back away. Please. That's all I wanted. Was that too much? Was that too much to ask, man? Uh-oh, what you gonna do, son? This is the straight bonking machine. Like, oh my gosh, he busted his teeth, bro. I think I like the main distribution of weight being a little bit higher on the weapon and then having a second hand on the lower end. Obviously, I'm probably using this weapon the wrong way and it's not intended to be used this way, but for me, this tends to be the most... I don't know, most consistent for whenever I'm actually playing. And that could just be because I'm mostly used to using shorter weapons in a lot of Blade and Sorcery gameplays, but I don't know. Overall, this is what works for me. Oh, I'm coming for those knees. Coming for those knees. Oh, snapper doodles. Let's see, let's go and throw some fire on. Because honestly, the fire's all right. I don't mind the fire. Ooh, and we got the good old bash. Only that was a decap, bro. Ugh. So I don't think you can actually get any decapitations using blunt weapons. I might be wrong on that. Anyone in the comment section that does know that, let me know. Because I, I don't think you can get a decap. I was hoping maybe if you just hit them hard enough, you might be able to knock it off. But I don't think you can dismember enemies by using a blunt weapon. As much as that would be a really cool feature, I mean, it doesn't necessarily really make sense. <laughs> but, I mean, it would be kind of cool. I, I wouldn't be against it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude. Whew! Oh, I should have had that freaking smack. Oh, that was actually a really good knockdown. Is she still alive? Alright, let's go and give this a good smack! Dude, the new jaw physics for this is amazing. I love this mod! I'm so glad that they updated the jaw physics mod to U11, because this is something I really liked in U10. And the fact now, we can actually use this in the newest version of Blade and Sorcery is just amazing. Like, look at this. The fact that VR is already at a point where you can see those facial features is just, it's so cool, man. And like, I'm pretty sure they're very similar to what Boneworks had. I'm not sure if it was actually stripped right from it, or if it was actually made from the ground up. I'm not really too sure. But if you guys would like to download the Jaw Physics mod and the Extra Blood, I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description below so you guys can go and check those out yourselves. But honestly, I think we're kind of getting to a point where we're about to end this video. So, if you guys did end up enjoying it and would like to see more content made on some more Blade and Sorcery, then be sure to smash that motherfucking thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new so you guys can stay up to date with all the VR content we post. And also, as for the mall, I would like to say this weapon, overall, I would give this a good, a good six. I would say the weapon's fun to use, it's semi-decent to handle. Overall, I would say the consistency is kind of where it's a little bit on a struggling thing, because sometimes I can get the bashes on their knees and they get knocked over, but other times, you know, it takes three to four hits before they actually get knocked over and you can even take them out. But Overall, a really fun weapon to use, but just not really my type, so I'm gonna give this ranking a 6 for this. But if any of you guys use the Maul and Blade and Sorcery, what would you guys rank it on the list out of 10? But yeah, other than that, guys, that's gonna be it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always... Keep it toasty, my friends. Laters! Laters!